Episode 214 today, hot topic, right? We've got Chauncey Fam in the studio. We're going to be talking about diversity in real estate. We're going to get started right now. Right now. <laughs> little selfie deal yep all right welcome back episode 214 we've got a great show today because we've got the one and only chauncey fam in studio what up what up the last time she was in studio covid happened yeah yeah in studio patient yes. zero yeah because every other time we've had to do it remote yeah, yeah. no absolutely yeah. i have a picture of of from that day of her very far away from us taking a <laughs> selfie behind us or from, but that was that was right before the off screen and off camera moment where i said hey come here give me a hug and she's like why are you touching me <laughs> yeah that was like the day that, that everything day. shut down it was, it was. Yeah, yeah. the yeah. biggest thing i remember about that day is how serious nick was about his preparations he would not stop talking about all the stuff he had collected <laughs> yes he yeah. dude was ready to be locked down underground <laughs> yeah. nick's years nick's wife brought me sourdough starter based off a conversation the other day that had to do with me dehydrating rice yeah. that yeah. we won't even get into. Look, I'm going to tell you right now, if you think that I went down a deep rabbit hole, we need to have Kelderman in the hot seat because uh, I'm definitely not dehydrating my food. Hey, oh, is that a big thing? Now? I got, I have some ideas about some things. I'm just oh, making sure we're ready to go. Goodness. That's all. How Here do you start a sourdough starter? I don't know. Is this like a chicken? Well, thing? I'll tell you, it's not with bottled water that Heather tells me because there's not a bacteria in it to get it going. So you got to use the tap water. Right. That's oh, the advice that? that Heather told me. Here's what I'll say. I don't from, know. Heather you gave can it go, to me. You can, you can just buy it from Eataly okay. for she $5. Did admit that too. <laughs> it's a, from a 100-year-old starter. And just do it that and way. Why would you? Yeah. Yeah. There's like some little Italian lady that started uh, sourdough 500 years ago, and now it's the mass produced yes. starter yes. for yeah. all yes. of Eataly. Wow. She added me to the sourdough group that I had to leave because I became so intimidated <laughs> by the fact that all of these people were having problems with the density and moisture of their sourdough. I was like, they're making me believe I can't do this. You should have seen her. You should have seen. And be, yeah, like, this is before we get into this real estate talk. You should have seen her, her sourdough today. Like it right. was, it grow, it, it grows like, and then it was so fluffy. I mean, it was, <laughs> she was, she, it's insane. What? It's, it's insane. Stupid. So this yeah. is a Facebook group. Yeah, starters. bro, there's like 50,000 people. I feel in. like, Matt, you always go down these weird I rabbit holes. Like you did the plant thing yes, for a while. The yeah. plant thing. Yeah. God. And now you're a sourdough dude. I had a hundred gallon fish tank with $300 worth of leaves in it. That was, <laughs> that was an exciting time. Yeah, and deuce, have, goose, deuce, goose. I have one face. So that's like a weird <laughs> Facebook group to be in. And I have, I think we all have at least one or two guilty yes. pleasure Facebook groups. Mine is it's called the American Express Platinum Secret Society. Yes, <laughs> yes. Derek I mean, is in that group. Know it's so fun. All they it's do just is people that can barely afford to get a platinum card bitching about not being treated well. Yeah. And I can't stop reading yes. these posts. Yes. I will spend hours watching people complain yes. about the dumbest things. Yes. Oh, if we're sharing that, mine is the Alex Murdoch oh, Facebook yeah. group <laughs> deal. And it's coming back because he's getting a retrial. Yeah. Is he really? Oh, is he really? Yeah. I thought oh. it's like one and done. Once no. you get convicted. No, there's something with a juror. I haven't been at, like, I'm just now the Facebook group is really starting to get reactive again because now all of that. So now I'm having to catch <laughs> Nick's up. He's been watching it intently. <laughs> yeah. I wanna, Comments have picked up. wild case. It, it is, is. So insane. I started, there's season two of whatever the show is on Netflix. And I started watching the, that season two yeah. uh, those, last night. Those Netflix shows, I don't want anything to bad to happen to anybody. But do you remember the Don't F with Cats documentary? Yes. 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 I can't, like, I, I don't. Did you guys remember this happening in real life? No. I don't remember that. I don't remember at all. No. And no. again, I don't want these things to happen in real life, but it kind of seemed like a hell of a lot of fun to be in one of those groups. Yeah. Tracking this dude down. <laughs> about. Yeah. I kind of want something to pop off again so I can get involved in one of these groups. But if you get and involved, do the Internet sleuthing thing, are you afraid that then you get so deep? You get they sucked come, in. They come after you. Ah, I don't know that that yeah, they that talk about that on the documentary about yeah, how they were really afraid. I comment to a stranger online. I'm like, is this the one crazy <laughs> bastard? Yeah. <laughs> just Welcome to my life. Dude, yeah, right? that Welcome actually might be. The perfect place to jump off yeah, that combo. Yeah. Look, this yeah. is we we just had this happen in real life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look, today we're we're talking about diversity in real estate. Chauncey and I were chatting last week and um about who we attract, right? right? And what we're putting out there and who we attract. And and she's like, get me on the show. 
I was like, all right, let's, let's talk about this. So, um, you know, we, we want to go deep in this. And, and if you are on our Facebook page, the only real estate group worth being a part of, you can see that Beth Silverman even said that this needs to be a hot topic. Cause I think the, what was the stat she put out there? It was like six, so 6%, 6% of real estate agents are black. And that's up from 5% just about 18 months ago. Um, and then the number is even less than that on the commercial side. It's less than 1%. That is insane. Mm. Yeah. I, commercial. Yeah, it's pretty much the yeah. status quo of honestly, it's a good old boys. It looks yeah. like just old white men. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just the other Mark Allen. Yes. We yeah. know two Mark Allens. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. And and that's you're right. Yeah. What do we think contributes to that a little bit though? Because like one of the things that I think is really hard for people to grasp is like what what sort of barriers like would even exist in the first place to cause something like that, right? Like like I don't know where to jump this conversation off. Let's right. be super honest. But how do you account for there is a population group of people mm -hmm. who are more than 6% of a population, right. but they only represent 6% of, of an entrepreneurial group that actually has like huge, huge upside and potential for every, like I think real estate is one of the most potentially culturally diverse, Absolutely. like entrepreneurial endeavors, because one, you have people who want to work with you, right? You have like, there's just all of the things line up for you to be able to do real estate. What in the hell is the barrier to that? Um, you know, man, this is this is a, a big topic to unpack. So um, I at one point was the chairman of the diversity committee with Texas Association of Realtors. So like I've done a lot of diversity work like this is just something like I talk shit about. And what I noticed um, kind of at the state level when we talked about it, it's it's even taboo there. Right. Um, but a story that I shared when I was um, on the diversity committee, because this question was asked, and I think it, it stems almost from a consumer uh, perspective and education. But one of the reasons that I got into real estate. Um, and so let me just kind of go back to this story. Um, I was still working in corporate America. I made about 55 grand a year. I had a boss who made 70 grand a year. I knew exactly what her husband did. I knew how much money they made because we were kind of friends, right? Um, Derek and I were um, at the point that we were building our first house. It was $256,000 in McKinney um, and we were getting an FHA loan. We were scraping to come up with three and a half percent down. Um, my boss, who was the same exact age as us, and made actually a little bit less money um, combined with her husband as me and Derek, they were shopping for a five hundred and fifty dollars to $600,000 house. I was so freaking confused. So I asked her, worked up the number one day, I'm like, Lauren, how in the hell are you guys affording so much house when we're like the same age? She tells me this story. She says that her husband's grandpa was in the military. When he got out of the military, he used his GI Bill to buy a condo. This um, condo uh, was uh, left to her, uh, his dad, uh, to her husband's dad, who then gave it to her husband when he graduated from high school. He then went to college in the same town that this condo was in in Florida. He lived in one bedroom. He rented out the other bedroom. Um, because of that, you know, he, you know, had a little bit of extra money while he was in college. And when he graduated from college, he sold it. He sold it. He made $130,000 off of it, moved across the, the country to Texas. He marries her. They buy a $150,000 house. The parents give them the $20,000 difference in the loan. They're paying $325 a month to the parents. And so now that they're getting ready to sell the house six, seven years later, that house is worth $250,000, at which point they're going to put down on that $500,000 house and their mortgage is going to be less than mine because they're putting down such a lofty down payment. So then their interest rate is less. They don't have PMI, like all of these things. And so that was how we got there. And so the root of that story was, that the grandpa got to use his GI Bill to buy a damn piece of property. And my grandfather has a purple heart that was in Vietnam and he couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I think that um, our stories are, are so uniquely different culturally. It's not even a color issue. It's a cultural issue mm -hmm. and it's a cultural difference. Um, and so as a black real estate agent, like I, I don't know a lot of people that owned houses before I got into real estate. And so I would never even think, to get into the business because who am I going to sell to? And let's be honest, it's really hard for me as a person of color to be the authority when, you know, I'm only 13% of the population who's actually going to look to me as the authority. And, and typically what do we always tell agents that when you get in the business, you go to your sphere of influence is my sphere of influence doesn't even know how to buy a damn house because they're only one generation into the game. Like, what am I going to do in this business? And so that's just the reality of it. And, and, and it's something that nobody really wants to talk about. That's fucking <laughs> dude. Here's the thing with that. Right. And it's hard. Um, it's hard to sit here and know what questions to ask and how to touch stuff like that, because that is the shitty reality of it is that 
when you are one one generation removed from from being able to bring your finances to bear and you're you're you said you had a grandfather that was a purple heart in vietnam purple which heart in vietnam. would have been able to do the same thing mm -hmm. we can all agree that probably wasn't afforded to him it at wasn't. that time no. right to even get ahead mm -hmm. what it let me ask the obvious question what do you think that does educationally to the entrepreneurial mindset around becoming a real estate agent by by having that limited time frame to see that even be possible right yeah i mean it it just, it doesn't even enter your brain. Guys, the only reason I even got into real estate, it wasn't because I saw people building wealth in real estate or I saw people, you know, selling real estate. I knew nothing about it. I just, my husband and I scraped up, bought our very first house. We end up selling it a couple of years later and the realtor fucking sucked. Like <laughs> That's like, why everybody gets their license because they had somebody <laughs> suck. And I, I saw like, I how much that. money he was making on the HUD and I was like, what? Like, this guy really sucks. So like, let me get into the business. Um, And so I think that because so many, um, you know, persons of color, particularly African-American, because that's the only experience that I can talk about. Um, but we don't even get to that point of, you know, homeownership. Now it's starting to ramp up a lot more, but like, we don't even see that. So, so you don't even know how much real estate agents work. It, it's so far removed from your reality. Mm -hmm. You don't even know how to approach it. Like, it's, it's just not something that you think about. Yeah. But that's also, I mean, I, I think a better conversation is when we talk about diversity and real estate being the, the title, right? Like, the market for professionals mirrors the market for consumers. Correct. Those things happen organically. So mm -hmm. in your mind, obviously, you've given this a lot of deep thought. How do you start to change those generational dovetails? To Because what we're talking about is is diversity in home ownership. Right. We're not really talking about diversity in real estate agents. That's that's kind of a silly conversation right. because the, the, like obviously there's a reason why. Right. You just explained it, right? <laughs> so we're talking more about diversity in home ownership. Right. You've given this a lot of deep thought. How do we point that into a more parallel direction? How do we get the generational shift back on track? And so that three generations from now, we're not so separated. It, and I, I definitely think that the gap is closing now. Mm. Um, but but then that that does, though, kind of go to um, the agent side of things, which is um, how we how we communicate and how we market to that consumer. And I mean, it's a little bit more difficult for you to to we all have our our, our avatars, right? Our target clients who we're talking to, who we're going to attract. Um, and so it's you know, it, it's it's kind of up to the the real estate agents that um are in the proximity of the the consumer uh and then speaking their language language and talking to them about the problems that are unique to to them um and then ultimately you know educating them and bringing them into home ownership which then would ultimately open up the gates for more professionals to get into it to sell it so it's, it's almost like which one comes first the chicken or the egg like you can't really get the consumer without without the realtor and you can't really get the realtor that's making any money without the consumer. Um, so I don't really quite know how to answer that, but I know that as someone that has a platform, my job, you know, when I first got in the business was to just really educate, yeah. but then therein lied the problem is I wanted a diverse customer base. Like I didn't just want to sell houses to like one particular type. I, I, I didn't want to attract only a certain type of agent when I opened up my brokerage. And then when I, you know, came over to the brokerage that I'm at now, but, but I've almost been pigeonholed into that because again, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, we don't like to say it, but the marketplace responds to us differently. And um, that's just kind of the crude reality of being an entrepreneur and it's okay. Um, you know, I, I did an event back in August um, in Detroit. And um, it was called the Black Agent Expo. And I couldn't figure out what I was going to talk about. And the night before I got up on stage, um, I posted me like going to the airport, like in my stories and this little like um, the flyer from the event that said Black Agent Expo. And um, a luxury agent here in the Dallas Fort Worth market actually sent me a message um, and responded to my story and said, imagine if that said White Agent Expo. I don't know why that's the bit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be super honest with you. Like, I get so tired of this shit. Like. Like it doesn't, there doesn't have to be a response to everything, right? Like at the end of the day, it is okay to just kind of let like, like what Chauncey's doing a great fucking job of like acknowledging is that there is just biases. Even if you're like the coolest, most chill person on the planet, Seriously. you're going to gravitate in certain directions. And this idea that we feel the need and I'll look, I'll, I will, I will do a little white person call out here of like to feel the need to respond sometimes to people with, well, what if it said that? Yeah, dude, that would suck, right? <laughs> that that it would if if we just had like 
like those types of things that that would be received differently and that's okay right like it doesn't have to be one or the other and i it's unfortunate that agent said that because i think i think what was really cool about what you were fucking doing was like i know you well enough to know that like that has nothing to do with who you are no. or what you were doing. That happened to be an event you were going to yeah. because I've seen you speak in front of all kinds of people at all kinds of topics that day. It happened to be that. Yeah. And that person just like Tammy decided, <laughs> decided to Lucky comment Tammy. on the one thing that you were actually like doing right. that day, as opposed to like the bulk level of work, which just shows people aren't really paying attention, which is just in general disappointing. Well, and, no. and, and at the same time, the whole reason why when Chauncey and I were talking last week, she's like, get me on the show and let's talk about this was just attracting certain clientele. Right. And, and if you wanted to break out of that mold as well how and do, you do it and how do we do it? And at the same time you hear us struggling right now with this co topic and conversation because you guys one, are uncomfortable as hell. It's uncomfortable <laughs> because one misstep. No misstep. Society right? sucks. That's right. Shit. It's like we can't live like, streaming. Yeah. yeah, dude. yeah. 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 And that's Agreed. the problem that like Chauncey and I were talking about last week is like, we can't, we want to be better. Right. Yeah. We want to say, all right, you know, 6% of all licensed realtors are black, right? 13% are Latino. Mm -hmm. And we look at this and we want that education piece to go out. Is that also the brokerage fault? Like, should brokerages do better? Yeah. And really, brokerages have diverse, you know, uh, groups. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, are they promoted as well as they should? Is there right education around it? And are they just doing that because they they feel they need they have to and they're not really putting enough energy around it yeah and they're also afraid to speak up because one misinterpreted word can can crumble everything yeah no a hundred percent um and and that's kind of the plight and that's what nick and i were talking about that even brought this conversation up like i'm, I'm pretty much asking him like how do i cross over you know what i'm saying like <laughs> like as a <laughs> as a freaking entertainer and i'm over like, here how do i make sure that <laughs> that i'm not doing anything wrong yeah like, that's literally yeah. our conversation i believe it that was our conversation and and we we're like how can we have these kind of like if these cameras weren't on and we weren't streaming we would be having a lot more yeah. free conversation yeah. and i just want us funnier. to get it, yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun, but <laughs> I want us to get to a point where we can have these open and honest conversations and acknowledge that there is a difference in the marketing and a difference in communication and a difference in culture. Um, and it's not, you know, just strictly color. Um, I, I think it's just very well, important that we. What happens? Let me ask you this, and and Matt, you can jump in. What if we just did that? What right. would happen? So, yeah. If, what if we Let's just did it. that? And he said, you know what? Because you know, Chauncey knows one of my biggest fears. <laughs> Right. I'm is to get, get canceled. canceled. Oh, right. One of my biggest fears is just to get canceled because like you look at this and I have one of yeah. like in my in my organization, I have one of the most diverse groups. He really out, does. Right. You do. Of all everything. Because of me, women. Bitch. Yes. Because <laughs> right? of, yes. Because of Chauncey and, and women run my life. Like that's everything. Like like this isn't just other than the show. Yeah. It's just, you know, three. This is the most dudes. meathead thing we yes. do. Yeah. You know, that that is not <laughs> so many beards and so much <laughs> yes. testosterone yes. out of this room all the time. Right. <laughs> that is not the makeup of how the businesses are run. And I'm over here telling Chauncey this. She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm like, Chauncey, look and even look how we're back and forth. Even you are are very careful with your words. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And and that's. That is a shame that we have to worry about that because what we are trying to do is put out the a good message of hopefully making and improving things. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we have to talk about it first before we can ever really like understand where everybody is and then then move forward with it. You said something really cool um, that I heard referenced in a reel with Denzel, right, where he's talking about the difference between like a white and black director doing a specific type of movie. I think he was comparing Shawshank to something else. And he talked about color versus culture, which is what you're talking about. And I think this is where the conversation gets bogged down and where it gets terrifying is we think people are going to interpret a cultural conversation in a color conversation and color cancels people. Yeah. But like what Denzel uses a reference and this hit me because I would never in a million years knows what this like Denzel used a reference of um, a hot comb hitting your hair in the morning and what the that smell. smell is like exactly the smell i have no freaking clue what that could possibly be like right. and i also understood exactly the point he was trying to make when he said that mm -hmm. that is the conversation that should be happening that we can never get to because people can't hear it through that context and i feel like this is that's what this is this is a cultural conversation i have represented a vietnamese client who mm -hmm. wanted a vietnamese speaking title company a vietnamese speaking lender and even asked me to lead her to a vietnamese part of town which i told her i could not do for the record <laughs> Right. And but the, the, but but, but, but the point was it, she, she wasn't she wasn't she wasn't racially motivated in that. 
She was oh. motivated by culture. Correct. Yes. Right? There are right. words that I would say in English that translated to Vietnamese would not make the same, it would not make any sense. Correct. And when you're talking about the largest financial decision of your life, shouldn't you have clarity? Yeah. Right? And I think that's where this gets so bogged down is people don't understand that it's a cultural conversation, not a it color is. conversation. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Um, and so, you know, we, we tried in the diversity, uh, that was probably the most frustrating thing I've ever done is like sitting in a room of volunteers that are like, I'm into diversity and inclusion. And then like, <laughs> no one really wanted to have a tough conversation. So then every fucking year we just landed on the same thing. Like, let's just translate this form into a new language. And like, that was the resolve, like yeah. literally for like a year's worth of work. Um, and the one time that we tried to do anything, which was, um, we put out a scholarship as dig this. Realtors are some of the craziest, most like we have a really dark underbelly um, to our industry. And so um, in the diversity committee, we came up with a scholarship to incentivize black agents to get more into commercial real estate. And so it was a, a scholarship that would get them a certification for commercial, but it was only to agents of color. But they had to go through this really long process, do interviews and, and all of that. And the post was made on the Texas Association of Realtors Instagram and Facebook pages. You guys should have seen the comments. The comments. We had to literally shut down the comments and turn it off because the agents freaked out so much about how it was reverse racism. And it was crazy craziness. Um, and I just don't know how we can have these types of conversations and get to a positive place if like we literally can't even have the conversations. But can you have it? And we're just worried about those comments. Do like I've been on TV. Okay, I know, I've had people call me all types of shit for like you and the I, last 18 months. Yeah, you and I have talked about that. And, yeah. and, and so I'm good. Yeah, of course. <laughs> right. But <laughs> but you know, you, you said you turn the comments off, right? Yeah. Where it's just like, look, this is the reason why we have to do this. Yeah. Because of these comments right here, yeah. that is absurd. Like to, it was to, wild. It's just a product of the society that we live in. What, what, what happens with tech, like modern technology and social media and little sound bites and snippets, is exactly what we've been talking about before. Like people don't love to talk about these things because people don't love to listen about these things. Right. And when people get emotional and they don't like to listen, nobody goes into an argument really very open-minded. They go into a, an argument or discussion trying to prove that they're oh, right, right, right? And so when they can't do that and they get frustrated, they lash out. And lashing out usually results in cancellation or things like that <laughs> these days. And so just like these conversations can be relatively uncomfortable because it's like, you gotta think back for the last hour. Like, did I say anything? <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it doesn't even mean you're wrong. It just means the person who doesn't agree with you could go and chop that soundbite up, turn it right. into a story, and now Nick looks like an asshole, right? right. right. But we have a cultural... Yeah, why'd you pick on me? Just because you're the most <laughs> afraid of it, right? <laughs> but like, it's a culture of judgment. No, and this is what people don't understand. Like, the, just the person texting you being like, or uh, commenting like, what if that said white agent? Like, that's the I'm not racist, but person, mm -hmm. right? It's not even like an outward thing. It's just they haven't taken the time to deeply consider some of the things that we just talked about. Like, right. for example, like the the vast disparity in homeownership is 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 deeply rooted in faraway cultures and like in, 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 in bloodlines from generations ago yeah. that still resonate today. And that needs to be considered during these conversations and be okay and like but when people don't want to talk about that stuff or be open-minded about it it makes it scary to talk about and it makes it not fun yeah and like then you can't the most productive conversations i believe are not just open-minded but they're light-hearted and when you have to tiptoe around conversations they become way less fun so they become way less productive mm. right i think home ownership disparity does not come from anything having to do with racial motivation at all. I will tell you right now, I know more second and first generation people who have homes. I think home ownership disparity comes from a head start. And I'll be super honest with that's, you. That's what I'm talking and, about. And I, and I agree with you. I don't think that's what you're saying. I'm just saying like, I know more people who either their parents or them just got to this country and they're putting themselves and other people in homes more than way more people who have 10 generations of a head start, right? Who can't figure out their credit, who are <laughs> living beyond their means, who are buying purses and other bullshit, yeah. right? And like, I think that like and look, this isn't even a, like a racial commentary. I actually like I, I'm thinking of myself right now. There is no reason why I shouldn't own the home that I currently live in and probably not a couple of others. And yet I see people who come to this country or start with whatever, like start behind me 
like out there just like living this American dream that by all accounts of everybody who says dumb shit on the Internet is reserved for people who look like me. Mm -hmm. And yet I don't have this, but they do. And it's because it's real for them. And yeah. for me, it's just one of those things that exists in theory because mm -hmm. I've been told it was there since the 50s. Yeah. Right. Right. And like that's the fucked up part of this is like most of the people on the other side of this are really complaining for their own lack of ability to take advantage of what they've been given yes. and watching people around them take advantage of the thing that's supposed to be for them and then in blaming this it on the wrong American people. dream. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. No, it's I just agree. a very big lack of like you made a, a great example earlier about the post, the diversity post, mm -hmm. right? Having to shut down the comments, right? Yeah. Like people have a very easy time sharing opinions of things they think they're sure of without really taking the consideration to think if they oh, yeah. have any idea what they're talking about, yeah, right? Absolutely. And then when it comes to things like race and culture differences, people get very dug into their opinions, mm -hmm. which again makes the conversations no fun. But like we have this mindset of like, there are no federal laws keeping us from being equal. So we're good now, right? And like you're not considering <laughs> hundreds of right. years of history. It's not like we're just like, my bad, right? right. Like we have to do work yeah. to actually give people equal opportunity. Equal opportunity isn't a legal definition. It's a Agreed. cultural mindset that we all work towards. And that's where I think people miss on the idea of like, don't all lives matter? It's yeah. just like such a <laughs> dumb mindset where you're like, but then again, right. when you talk about those things, they become very not fun because people get very upset about them. Absolutely. And then I think it drives us further apart. But you know, the, the idea that people are upset by conversations when people have lived experiences that are actually worthy of being upset about, like kind of fuck you. Um, so <laughs> sorry, Tammy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Tammy. Yeah. But Burning that, like, like that, that makes it so like, like that is what I'm talking is like, this is why I love talking to you because you <laughs> talk so open-mindedly and we have fun with it. I think we learn a lot from one another just because we, we see each other as, as, as equals in our, on our professions and, and entrepreneurial pursuits. And we, and we, we cherish our relationships and we like have fun with it. Like, yeah. but we're so afraid to have these delicate conversations. Like I was going to make a joke earlier and you asked how you're going to cross over. And I was going to say that one of us has to bite you, but now I'm going to get canceled. Right. And that's because we don't, we don't just give day each other, a camera with it. Right? We just don't <laughs> give each other the grace to have these conversations. We just that. come from a place of judgment. Yeah, right? I love that. And it so makes much. it not fun and then it's not productive. <laughs> right? maybe, I love that. So maybe we get more eyeballs if you get us canceled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't done from it somebody. With, with a couple of the things that you've said over the past 240 episodes, I don't know if that's First that I have said. You, there, there have been one allusion to very tiny people, which is real blatant, <laughs> that I think was way worse than what I just said. Fucking Nick. I mean, you know, you know what you you what you fear comes into reality. It's like yeah. Yeah, it, it, I manifested it. that one. You know, <laughs> look, it is what it is, though, Matt. I mean, I'm tall. Yeah, first off, so you are. I'm really tall, tall. but I mean, I, I do. Everything comes back to to education as a whole yeah right so if we does. go back to freakonomics um you know the the book and, the, and even the movie that came out everything yeah. is is about how do you break how do you break the cycle within the education piece and i think number one the education piece is designed it, this goes down to deep holes designed to keep people where they are a hundred percent um and and um it's also designed in in my opinion to keep people almost segregated and in, in, yeah. in a sense so no, it is. that's a whole different but, probably but so then you guys just you know tell me how how can i you know as a woman um and as a person of color um you know what can i do in my business is there anything that i can do in my business to start attracting you know how do all of us how do you guys start attracting people um you know a more diverse consumer base and customer base how how do we achieve that um is that through marketing is that through our communication is that something that we have to make concerted effort to do is that just or is are things just going to stay the way they are uh, i mean that's a great question i go back and look at all all of my clientele and and i i mean i'd have to i don't have the stat or number but i feel like you know i've actually have a really diverse group of clients mm -hmm. um and and you know maybe because i'm not putting out just certain marketing right. you know pieces where um you know from an educational piece it's just you know we're going after anybody who's thinking about selling a house <laughs> from a from a canceled and expired it doesn't matter right and that's something that chauncey and i always always talked about i said i don't care who you are <laughs> i'm gonna As take your money yeah I'm, I'm earning the money i don't take it i earn the money chauncey remember we earn this 
um, yeah, we're, we're worth what we are yes. on this. And, um, but I do believe 100% that to break that, to break that mold, it's probably getting into throwing more educational pieces uh, and events maybe for that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't feel like, all right, if you're going to throw something out just for, you know, black realtors, right. Like, you know, that's, that probably what's the message, right. Right. You're right, only, right. you're only attracting what that message is putting out there. Agreed. Right. And then like that one agent, like, why aren't they putting it out for white? Like it's so <laughs> fucking stupid, but you know, we, we, we are, you know, the message we're putting out is the type of reception we're getting back and the type of people that are going to respond to that. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, look at all, look at the comments that you've gotten just off the show. Jeez. Right. Just on, the, just on the show. And by the way, if you don't know what show Chauncey's on, she's on zombie house flippers, mm -hmm. right? Did Damn. really, really well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's doing pretty good. Just pretty good. Pretty What's good. the ratings on that? Oh, we we get you know eight hundred thousand to a million an episode. Yeah, dang. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. It don't yeah. do shit. Don't worry. Yeah, but <laughs> I kind of I want him to go through this, but I do want to talk but about that. But I, you know, when it first came out, I went to the to the, and this is something that I, I mean, I reached out to you on because this, I mean, this is how ridiculous how far this goes is that you should have seen the comments on Facebook. I mean, it was absolutely absurd, and I asked her about this, and she's like. You know, you know, growing up, you said something you said something to me about this, that you're not you're not used to this anymore because the group that you build has kind of insulated you from this. Absolutely. And some of these were I mean, you know, if you're open to talking yeah. about that. Yeah. No, I mean, it was it was wild. And yes. So so I look, I'm I'm an African-American woman. I'm married to a Vietnamese and Algerian dude. We have like freaking little kids that are like United Nations because they're fucking <laughs> everything. Right. Um, My group is, you know, all of my friends, they're diverse, they're white, they're black, they're gay, they're straight, they're they're everything, every religion, every creed, every, you know, income. Uh, we're everything. And so um, I have been living in this la la land. Right. Where I just thought, like, this is this is how life is now, right? It's cool. And then I get thrown on this television show where now I am exposed to like everyone and, and the underbelly and dark side of society. Like I'm exposed to these people as well. And I was getting hurled. So the show that I'm on, I'm mean, a house flipping show. It airs like on Saturday mornings. So um, it has an older demographic, um, mostly Florida because um, it's Florida. That's what they're doing. Um, <laughs> because that's where the show originated. And so, I got pummeled, like pummeled. And I was the only one of the cast. So my husband, he's a little bit racially ambiguous. Some people think he's Hispanic. Some people think he's Asian. Um, then, you know, we had Sarah, who was the stager. She's a white lady. Um, and then, you know, they had our, our old GC on there a little bit. But I was the only one that got pummeled with fat, black, she should be a slave. Why is she yes. legitimately like, like I sent this to Nick, like crying. And yeah. I'm like, Nick, what? And and I'm what over, do I do with this? I, and I had I was speechless because I'm like, number one, I I don't see this on social media. This is not this is not in my social media feed. Yes. Right. So I was like, tell like tell me about this. She's like, I hadn't experienced this since growing up or something like yeah. that. Right. And 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 you know, I didn't know that that made this is my oblivious part to it as well. Right. So this I was like, that shit still exists. That still exists. I remember that, you saying that. that. You're exactly. like, what? <laughs> yes. I was like, that still exists because in our world, you know, I, I don't see any of that. No. And and even our group, we don't hear about that. No. So it, it's and then you hear about the the Texas Association of Realtors having that same problem. It's like, mm. who are first of all, who's who feels like they are comfortable enough to comment that? Well, that that there is there is just the People social don't media need a aspect job anymore because they're retired in Florida. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is this just an aspect of like hiding behind social media. That I I have been curious how kids who have grown up with a camera in their face will do the dumbest shit. I, I like I, there were no cameras around and I wouldn't do half the crap people do in front of a camera. Now, right. I think there is just some sort of safety in the fact that, you know, you can't really be found. Right. Mm -hmm. It allows you to say something like that. And I, there's just people out there who are freaking terrible. And now you actually see what they have to say because they can reach right, like good, the good people reaching right out to your personal shit, mm -hmm. like saying stuff like literally sending me emails um, because my phone number is out there. Why wouldn't it be? You are I'm an active realtor. real estate agent. <laughs> like, geez. So they were calling, they're like texting, they're emailing They're you know, the network tags me in posts. So that's how I was seeing all of, of it. Course. Because anytime they tag me, then when people would comment, then I you would see it. it. It was so wild. But, you know, I just say all of that to say that, like, it's not gone. How did that impact you, though? Like, how did like that? It hurt you. Oh, 
Oh, definitely. Yeah. Like I, I went home and stayed under the covers for a solid 45 days. Like y'all didn't yeah. see me on social because I was just like, whoa. Cause it was, it was very personal attacks. Um, and you're and a very confident racial. woman. Very, I'm very, yes. look, I'm confident. Okay. Yes. Your girl's a 12. Okay. Yes. I'm a dime out here. And so, um, but, but, but they, they shook me up a little bit yeah. um, because I just was not used to that. And like I said, I'd built out um, this world. So I just, I just want people to understand that like, um, although our uh, direct uh, environments and spheres of influence may look a certain way and don't have any of this nasty stuff and and it doesn't feel like discrimination is still there that anything is different color doesn't matter like it it does yeah. um and it is something that i think once we start acknowledging that it's there and then just appreciating our differences instead of um saying that they just don't exist at all um i i think that we can get a little bit further in these and if, and if we break that down a little bit even more like you're very confident, right? You're 12, which we don't disagree. <laughs> and and the fact is that you are confident enough to pull yourself up and you actually you actually embrace some of that cuz you come out firing and you're very you're very mm. witty that way where I could see this is how I see how it doesn't get better right now because if people hear that or read that they maybe they lack confidence or they don't want to put themselves in a in a stressful or a uh, frictional environment. Yeah. And so they're like, you know what? I just don't want to do this. I'm just subject to wherever the world's going to take me and whatever happened happens. Yeah. And that's where I see where it doesn't get better. Yeah. And, 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 and that happens. Um, I hear, you know, as I'm coaching agents with doing social media and all of that, I literally have agents say, should I, should I put my face like on my sign? Should I, should I actually like do social? Because then people will like, oh no, I'm black. And like, they won't hire me. And so like, it's a thing. So, and again, this isn't like a weird thing. This is just something that we have to acknowledge that like this happens. And so then how do we um, teach agents to, you know, maybe market themselves or educate or, or you know, cross over, as I said, so that um, we are a little bit more comfortable. Um, and I think, you know, some of the old coots that, that cause a lot of these issues, like they're dying out. Um, <laughs> maybe time. Maybe, maybe time. Is maybe time the is the answer. I mean, we got a first hand look at this the yeah. other day, right? Like, just so you guys get background, like someone made a I don't even call it nasty, just a very ignorant series of comments on the post, even oh, just marketing good. Chauncey being on this show. And I can just tell you that same person we'd never heard of because apparently none of the crazy <laughs> shit we've ever done in our own Facebook group is bad enough for this lady to disapprove. Right. But but, but that one post with me on it, like here she came. Well, it, it is. It, it is. It's it's so and it goes back to like what people choose to focus on. Right. Like there's all of there's all. The, and that was kind of my initial comment to her was like, there's all this opportunity to learn here. And like, this is what you choose right. to focus well, on. You know what? They'd be the interesting one. Would she comment if if Chauncey was white? Well, dude, and honestly, or if I was a man not, or a man, too, a man, happened. too. Yeah. We can prove it wouldn't happen if you're a man. We literally have had episodes on here that we're embarrassed to still have up on the Internet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this isn't no, actually episode. And the only comment we ever got one time was somebody was like, hey, the silhouette of the show. It used to be like these three like silhouetted dudes. They were like, it's a little masculine. <laughs> and Brian, Brian's original promo pick was him and his dog, which is kind of like oh, yeah. a pit. And like those are the most aggressive things we got. I'm like, you realize the dumbass shit we have said? on this yeah. show this lady is old tam's never shown up yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden she flew out the bird coop and just came hauling ass into the comment section you know and it was yeah. like she was just mad because you know for for reference go go to the only real estate uh podcast we're listening to actual business like fan page and you can see it's a very simple post and you can see the responses to her and it was just i mean i think we have just created a space to make things worse right yeah. like at least before you only had to listen to people if they made it on the news or right. if you lived close to them. Social media gives them a Now, mic. man, if you decide, and, and thank goodness for you not doing that, but like if you decide to go in the comment section of anything, oh, you yeah. run a real risk of just like finding the cesspool of humanity. Oh, absolutely. And they came after you, dude. They did. They I still did. I still think you should have gone with what what you talked about, which is she was going to read the comments. I still think it's great. Right. Yeah. I found this really fun bit on TikTok and of yeah. Instagram of making video replies to people with comments. Yes. This is an interesting way to waste your time. Yes. Well, <laughs> well no, I, I, I initially was going to do one of two things um, or possibly both, which is take some of the comments and put them on T-shirts. So like, yeah, she's a, a fat black chick with a big mouth like Tammy from Facebook. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
That's like some shit David Goggins would yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, so like I was going to do that and like put it on t-shirts, but then also kind of the bit that you see where the celebrities read like, you oh, know, mean tweets. The, tweets. The, the mean tweets. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, kind sure. of, you know, do my spin on that and, and read them online. Content. Yeah. I still think <laughs> it's content. I still think it's content. But now they, now they like me. These same people are like, oh my gosh, I like Chauncey now. And it just took time for them to like, you know, uh, just get acclimated to it's a new cast on the show and the show looks different. And um, so so I just really think that as as the climate changes in business and in real estate and all of that, it, time is going to be a big piece of it. But also we just can't be pussies and not talk about it. No, we've talked a lot about um, kind of like like challenges and things like that. What? I don't really know how to answer this, but like I think real estate is the greatest entrepreneurial endeavor with the least cost of Okay. getting in right yeah. and that's why i think it, it applies to everybody and i think you can kind of and we see it sometimes just in how terrible people are at this job honestly it's like how does how are you here <laughs> right it's like two right. grand in like a month of your life so like i know the barrier to entry is low which should make make it the most inclusive thing imaginable right so my question is what is the limiting of belief that has to exist because the opportunity is there. If the dollar amounts are low, we can't make it about socioeconomic stuff because right. we've all agreed that the barrier to entry real estate might be too low. Right. And if that's the case, it can't be a socioeconomic issue. Anybody can do it. So what? But why is, it, is, is it really too low? It's too low if you have the money to pay for it. Here, here's, here's what yeah, I will $2, say. $2,000 is here, up. Here's what I will say. And, and, yeah. and this, is just, this is just real life. And this is unfortunate if your life doesn't match up to this. If you think that changing your career to a point where you can make over six figures, which we know less than 17% of the population makes for less than $2,000 of a month of your time is too much, then you probably just need to keep doing what you're doing regardless, sure. Sure. regardless of your cultural demographics, right? You're just not cut out for entrepreneurship and this ain't for you, I right? Agree. That's the first real talk aspect of this. But okay. if building your own business and setting your family up with things that you don't have and wealth that you never obtained, and you can put together two hundred dollars at a time, right? We talk about it's two grand. You even come up with the two grand all at once. You're going to like three hundred bucks at a time per right. class, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And well, piece then, it but together. Then you have to join the mafia, right? Well, that, that okay, fine, whatever. But then, like, like so, then, then what is it like? How do we just have the limiting belief around entrepreneurship? Because I don't even think this is a. I don't think this is a cultural color issue. Just a limiting belief around being able to go out and take the reins on your own life and building a better family dynamic for yourself. That's the conversation that needs to be had because I think you paint yeah. that dream for people and now they start seeing all the amazing opportunities that exist in real estate and then specific brokerages. No, I, I 100 percent agree. So so I mean, I think that those of us that have the microphone and we have the platform, um, it's going to be our job to, to really get out there and, and share the message and, and spread the word so that, you know, folks can kind of get over those limiting beliefs. But but again, I, you know, for me, real estate was just not even something that I freaking thought about. I mean, I was a bartender. Yeah. Like I, I didn't know anybody that that owned a house like like e even my husband like right. we just we didn't know like our grandparents owned houses but like beyond that like we didn't understand real estate and how you can build wealth with it and so being that we didn't know people with it, then like why would i go into real estate like i don't even know anybody that wants to buy a house like like who could who can save up 20 20 percent you know thirty thousand fifty thousand dollars to buy a house like up until i got into real estate i didn't even know anyone that that had like twenty thousand dollars cumulatively mm -hmm. like in their bank account yeah and i think that's that's the change, right? Like, that's the change. We, we, we talk yeah. about like changing the diversity in the industry. It's changing the diversity in the demographic of homeownership. In Correct. The first place, and right? I think, but ultimately I do think that that's, I mean, with all the education that is out there now that's available, like when we say we need more education, we probably need to sure. highlight the, the right education. Correct. Right. Because Correct. there is so much at our fingertips. It now. is. And, it is. and, you know, and probably we need to look at it from a standpoint of, of, you know, not from the lenders doing it for, to, to qualify for a special loan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. what is that going to, that that's not going to help you. That's a requirement. And we probably need to bring it into the high school levels Mm -hmm. And then into college or or something in 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 the middle of all that, um, because that's where you're going to start breaking the mold. Yeah. Right. If if, I agree. if in high school you have a tenth, eleventh, or twelfth grade, and you start to have this, you know, you know, one, we should have financial literacy God, yes. talk at a higher level. But two, talking about the dream of home ownership and what you know, we need to talk about loans. Yeah. Like. You know, when you when you came out of school, did you even know about credit card debt and everything else and, no. and interest rates? No, I was terrified of all of that. 
Um, I didn't, I didn't know what anything was, um, you know, and, and I'm from a really small town out in East Texas. And I remember at one point after I got into real estate, I was like, shit, I, I need to go back home and like, um, talk to people about, you know, getting, cause I, I know so many people that are 60, 70 years old. They've been renting the same house for 40 years. Like that's just what they do. So they, they paid that house off. Yeah. They paid yeah, it off. Exactly. Like it's, it's a blue collar town. Right. So I, I, I remember vividly going and having a conversation with, um, a couple of people at my grandmother's house. So I had some family members there, some family friends, and I was talking about it. And I'm like, you know, I really want to help people with home ownership and Texarkana, some of these blue collar guys, they're making 75, 80 grand a year. There's no reason why they don't buy houses. And their response was like, but the people at the bank, like if we go to the bank and they see us, like they won't give us a loan. So like the, it, it doesn't even compute to them that they're worthy of, of of yeah. of an opportunity yeah. and so like i don't know how to break that well, take, you know how to break it it takes one chain to break and right. then and then the ripple effect is there so that if you broke into that and said merle right because right. i'm that's the only old person name i can think <laughs> of that's probably what it is. yeah there's probably a merle there in Texarkana, right <laughs> definitely yeah so you heard old merle just got into a house and you know he did it so and so chauncey was able to help out then it starts to chain reaction or you start you start an education class say you know come be like merle no absolutely and and i think that that a big part of me um a reason that my marketing is the way that it is and the way the reason that i show up the way that i do is i never want people to think that i'm exceptional so that then they don't think that my results are exceptional right mm. i want everyone to understand that what i've done and what i've achieved is attainable um, if you just apply the right principle. And I, I think that a lot of people um, kind of get into this business. And so whether that's, you know, black or brown agents or whatever, but just in real estate in general, I think we need, need to do a better job at um, showing the consumer and showing other agents um, that we're not on the pedestal that they put us on based on the content that they see um, online um, and that we are not exceptional. Therefore, our results are not exceptional. Therefore, um, if they buy into the same types of things that we've done, they then, then what we've done is attainable. I think it's very important. If all truth is in knowing and experience, that comment and everything she just said is so awesome because I think one of the things that I've been unable to put my finger on when it comes to Chauncey's content is that attainability part of it. We see so many other influencers and people because of the podcast or the worlds that we roam in that are not doing anything like what they're talking about. And I think one of the most consistent things I've said behind the scenes to my wife, to other people when talking about you, because you're a consistent guest and I have intimate knowledge of your business and you, right. and we've been hanging out for a long time. Like that is absolutely what it is. Like you're not doing anything that other people can't do. And it's mm -hmm. not because you're not talented. Like it takes talent. I listen to you guys talking about putting deals together and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> my brain is breaking yep. because I don't understand how all that stuff fits together. So there's obvious talent in it. But it's not talent that isn't it does is outside someone's ability to learn. And right. I think that is you're not speaking in these weird parables that just like end up going nowhere. Yeah. Like if anybody listened to Jerry Jones talk yesterday, good Lord. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Like <laughs> unbelievable. The circles that dude talked in. Right. And Man, like I want to see. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I'm not going to shot. Can you imagine Jerry Jones just making a run in November and just the Biden Jones <laughs> debates <laughs> oh, my God. Just, would just be. So good. Please I'm don't. already concerned about what's yeah, going to happen concerned. this November. <laughs> no, uh, I don't want to think about it. To the old heads that are yeah. going to be up there. But I just, I think that's really cool. And I, there's not really a question there or anything more than there's just acknowledgement and the fact that like, that is always what I've seen your stuff and been like, why is her shit different when she's kind of it's doing the same no, thing? It's real. It's super it's real, authentic. right? Like, like, yeah. If she's going to sell anything, that's something that she believes in. The only thing that I'm going to discriminate on with Chauncey. <laughs> This is going to get me canceled. Here okay. it is. It's it okay. It's a moment he's I've been, waiting. I've been waiting for this, but I'm going to discriminate against you, Chauncey. What, Nick? You already know what it is. What? You already know. No. She wears, she walks in these sandals. <laughs> yeah, dude. And she, yeah. she posts. Do you wear Burks? No, they're not Burks. No, they call them Jesus sandals. They're freaking Tevas, okay? They're hiking sandals. They're not, there's no such there's thing no as There's no such thing as hiking, hiking sandals, sandals. Johnson. Yes, Why would you hike in sandals? <laughs> Snakes could bite through that. Yeah, Are these really? the strap bag so Velcro? No utility. Yes. 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 Let me try to get by one of those one time. I love like, them I so much. You know what I'd much rather see you in? Some Crocs. I don't what Crocs are Crocs. sweaty foam boxes. Yeah. I don't prison understand shoes. why anybody I mean, only wear Crocs. In Derek jail. would love Crocs. No, Derek hates all of it. Okay. It, yes. So that's <laughs> look. If we're gonna do, if we're gonna give any social media hate to Chauncey, it's the it's those sandals. And I'm look. I'm all for it. I would let Tammy 
roast you for Tammy. the sandals. <laughs> yes. If it's just been a feet pick of Chauncey yeah. that we promoted, <laughs> Tammy would have been justified. I'm, I'm 100%. I'm 100% on board with that. And I'm probably the fan club. I'm going to lead that charge. So I'm definitely doing that. <laughs> no trying to take tour over to OF. Yeah. No, no, no more, no more uh, sandals. Well, I will just there. leave this conversation with one thing, which is, you know, let's just acknowledge the fact that we do have all different learned experiences, mm, yes. um, that our experiences as entrepreneurs are different. Let's stop saying that it's all the same. I don't see color. I don't know, but you see culture. Um, yeah. Let's acknowledge our cultural differences. And maybe one day we can all cross over. Yeah. I, 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 Brian's going to cross over. I'm going to cross over. You're going to yeah. cross over, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> apathy is not empathy, I think, is another yeah. thing. Yeah. Right? Like, yep. we have so yeah. much apathy. Of, like, cause, like, and, and I mean, we're all guilty. We're all busy as hell, right. right? But, like, we do a very poor job of trying to empathize with one another's human experience, especially mm -hmm. ones from different culture, and we take the route of apathy. And I think that that creates a much longer timeline to what we're trying to accomplish. I believe. Yep. Yeah. Agreed. By the way, Beth Silverman said she was late to the party, but she's got a direct email from Melinda saying his team was ranked the number one team in America for black and Hispanic home loans. Hey, I like that. So I, I like also that. like I also like Theron's. I'm Chauncey's yeah. white friend, just so everyone knows. <laughs> 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 yes, you are, Theron. Yeah. Yes, you oh are. Sorry, Theron. Yeah. Yeah. This was fun. This was no, this fun. was good. See? Yeah, dude. I, uh, and it got. Are y'all's pit sweaty? No, not no, nah, dude. <laughs> no. I think I'm more worried that other people are going to take like our friendship and our ability to talk about this stuff. And like you said, like, like just like people like not now, because I think this conversation was great, but like, that's always the thing, man. It's just, it's so impossible to have these it conversations. I'm, and that's why I like you. Cause like we can just message about this shit and I ain't got to worry about it. Yeah. No, I, I don't yeah. get weird. No, she doesn't. I know. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Where, where I will say that you're making a big push on TikTok. Mm, yeah. 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 Is it, what is it? Because on Instagram, it's the Chauncey show. I'm the Chauncey fan, show. The Chauncey show, which Chauncey I'm not used show. to because it's you, it's used been to be the a estate chick real forever. Yeah, so I'm not used to the Chauncey show yeah. showing up on my Instagram. What, what is it on TikTok? Is uh, it the same? No, it's it's Rebel Realtor. Rebel, Rebel Realtor. Realtor. That's been, that's what, been it for a minute. Yeah, what's Rebel the Realtor. allure of TikTok right now? Is um, just... So TikTok, just to let you guys know, is making a big push to go more long form video. Yep. They're pushing for horizontal videos instead of vertical. Um, They're adding a 30 minute video feature. And YouTube was my jam. And like, YouTube was my jam, not because I was technical at it, but because like I could just show up, be entertaining and like do shit that other people couldn't figure yeah. out. And so if I can now take that over to TikTok, then mm -hmm. it bam. And a really cool thing a lot of people don't know is most smart TVs now, if you're purchasing them new, they have the TikTok app. Um, oh and so gosh. that's so that you can watch TikTok just like you can stream YouTube. That's because so they're trying to China's going to be in our house. So very you better watch this election in November. Your <laughs> ticky talky might go away. Yeah. So yeah, so, so head on over to TikTok if you can if you can unlock some shit on TikTok. Like it it functions as a really good top of funnel. Yeah. Um, I've been getting consistently probably about fifteen leads for my lead magnet with my free downloads. Um, just from posting TikTok videos, and I'm not even like super consistent. Maybe two three videos a week. Yeah, wow. she crushes so, it. Rebel, Rebel Realtor on that one, and then the Chauncey Show on Instagram. Um, and then uh, go support her, and then just make sure to support our sponsors, like Theron over here, who um, who's with Armadillo. Chauncey's only – what did he say? I'm My Chauncey's white friend. White friend, <laughs> white right? friend. Armadillo one forward slash tour, T-O-R-E. Um, get that hard shell protection from the home warranty side. And then uh, Mortgage Mike just slinging those loans. Send him two it, today. Yeah, send him – Kelderman sent two over. He's really, really busy. Uh, Mortgage Mike, MMGloans.com. And then, look, you want to get in be an investor. Chauncey says you're only an investor if you flip or own real estate, not if you're a wholesaler. Don't, 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 There's nothing wrong with that. Wholesaling isn't investing. It's speculation. It isn't. There's nothing wrong with it's that. It's marketing. There's nothing wrong with it. We've we all wholesaled them. properties, and, and I don't have any See? shame. It's not investing. It's not investing. It's I'm marketing. Invest, I'm investing my money into that deal. Stop it. Don't start arguing with me. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't even think flipping is investing, and I still do it. Okay. It's speculating. Short-term speculation. She yeah, said, okay. Though. Okay. You guys are baiting her at <laughs> we, like, we, we act like, in fact, like if you if you say it's not investing, you're talking bad about it. It's not. I flip, and I'm a speculator in that regard. I invest in long-term stuff. But if you're going like, to hold it and rent it, you need to get with uh, yeah. Homeward DFW, the best property management company so in Dallas-Fort Worth, homewarddfw.com. And then if you notice, and you actually watch this show all the way through, because hopefully you did, and you're watching it on YouTube, and you hit that subscribe button, or if you rewatch it here on, on Facebook, you notice that the camera kind of fucked up, <laughs> right? And it messed up. Sometimes that happens. And on the fly, 
Jesse jumped out of his chair and fixed it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is the benefit of using Tor Studios, torstudios.com and Jesse as your producer. Um, so just go over there, support them, and then go uh, leave us some reviews. And, uh, you know, coming up on 100,000 downloads. 100,000 nice. downloads. Go get us there. Yeah. I remember when you guys there. started this thing. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Duncan and I Tequila and beer. Chinese intellectual property theft earlier. Why? We're talking about they put one of their properties up for lease on theft. Zillow. Really? <laughs> that was just relevant to the TikTok conversation. Interesting. Yeah. Brian, it's not you, good. Just, you just need to get on TikTok and leave your shirt halfway unbuttoned like it is now. Just show a little bit of that chest. You just go live and do NPC stuff. Yeah. Like people oh get a rose gosh. and be like, oh, a rose. Yes. The a weird rose. NPC stuff. You can, yeah. you can kill it. That? Wait, what is that? It's literally, dude. It's so you give, them, you give them money and then it pops a thing up and then they do a thing. So they'll like eat something. And I, dude, there's this guy who stands on a street corner in New York City. <laughs> Why people walking behind him going live and somebody will give a rose and he'll be like, a rose, yeah, a rose. They act like NPCs Bro, and they make money. In front of other humans. What? Jesse, I'll pull up how much that girl made. Tiki, oh, that girl. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm the talking NPC about. Girl? Yeah, the NPC girl. Yeah. yeah. We don't even well, pull up. Johnson, More than she should have. Chance and I did talk about, because I was like, how do I get my message out? Because like, like, I'm not as charismatic as Chauncey. Stop right? saying that. But I'm not. It's okay. <laughs> Chauncey, it is what it is. And so I'm like, but. Extreme. We play Call of Duty every night, not Chauncey and I. Yes. And if Derek would let me into his group, I Chauncey probably plays play Fortnite. Them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm like, what if I did like it? Because I've at 41 years old, I now can say that I watch people play video games on TikTok Live. I asked Jesse today to set me up with a streaming setup for Luke. He wants to stream Fortnite, bro. Yeah. So I was talking about maybe streaming and doing real estate business talk. Yeah, I I'm think playing it would be awesome. Games. Play his game, sit on the couch, set up his tripod. He's playing the video game like. Like that would would touch such the target audience of I've like the played 35 it with him though, and he doesn't talk enough to be entertaining. It'd Who? just be watching this bear playing <laughs> fucking <laughs> Call of Duty. Well, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going shirtless. Well, that might help. But just sit there with your head on backwards, you're playing, and then you're having like a serious talk about yeah, it would raising be real estate talk, not, development. not that I just got shot and sniped across the yeah. room, and I'm over there cursing about that. So real estate talk, just while he's gaming, I just think that that makes him That'd relatable. Be cool. The only real estate Twitch stream worth watching, man. Yeah, you yeah. want to do that? We can drink wine yeah. and play COD yeah. and talk about real estate. Damn, I would love to that. play again. That would be I cool. would let Jesse and I play every night now. Really? Yep. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. <laughs> you it's literally in the there. group yes, every yes, night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <is>. So, <laughs> ignore them. All right. Um, um, Sorry, small horn. We almost made it to an hour. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, we, get to, yeah, we don't need an hour. Fuck that. So, yeah. All right. Make sure to go support Rebel Realtor on TikTok or the Chauncey Show on Instagram. Uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button because we are pushing our, our YouTube subscriptions up there. Okay. And um, yeah, we're really, I guess we got to do this on TikTok now. I guess yeah. so. Dude, I dude can we go live on TikTok with yes. this show? You, have you, some need more a, you need a thousand subscribers. Yeah. Why have we missed that boat? Well, because we don't post anything on Tiki Talks. Just yeah. the not Facebook yet. Group should get we should. A How do you not have a thousand subscribers on all of our? Because we could do this live. Our Facebook group alone yeah. should do that. hundred percent. All right. Like yeah, we've got this shit. All right, all we're right, gonna be we'll on TikTok by next week. <laughs> all right. Do it. All right, Chauncey, thank week. you so Bye, much for joining guys. us. Bye, guys. Thank you guys for having me. All right, get us out of here.